Hi, Brent Tech here, where tech is made simple. So our next optional bug fix C release update for Windows 11 24H2 is now in final preview with the release preview channel insiders. And the next update, which is going to roll out towards the end of this month as an optional update is KB5064081. Now there's quite a lot going on in this next optional release. And with most of these optional updates, as you may well know by now, Microsoft jam packs them full of fixes and new features. So they are quite big updates. So I'm just going to jump straight into this. Now, first of all, the new features and fixes I'm going to mention now are all rolling out gradually. So Microsoft does say that, please note that features and improvements that gradually roll out may not begin rolling out right away, nor will they immediately show up right away. So just take that into consideration. Now, the first two I'm just going to mention because they are for Copilot Plus PCs, where Recall now opens to a personalized homepage that puts your recent activity and top used apps and websites front and center, Microsoft says, making it easy to pick up where you left off. The next new feature is when you launch Click To Do for the first time, you'll now see a quick interactive tutorial. And another new feature is when an app requests access to location, camera, microphone, or other device capabilities, Windows now shows a redesigned system dialog box. The screen dims slightly and the privacy prompt appears centered on the screen. So that's the new look. Here's what it was before. And a lot of these new features I have posted on previously when they were still in the dev beta channel and so on. And then the next new feature is that the larger clock with seconds is now back in the notification center, which I think is a nice move in the right direction, which is displayed above the date and calendar. And to turn this on, you would go to settings, time and language, date and time. And yeah, you'll see show time in the notification center. So you'll see that toggle there. And I actually think that's a very nice move in the right direction. And then to mention two fixes, if you accidentally click down and slide your mouse on the taskbar preview thumbnail, clicking it may stop working. And File Explorer preview windows may appear when hovering over unrelated app icons in the taskbar. So those are two fixes for little niggly issues. And we have another new feature where Microsoft says, when you search from the Windows taskbar, a new grid view will help you more quickly and accurately identify the desired image within your search. And then sticking with search on the taskbar, Microsoft says that search on the taskbar now provides clearer status information if your background search results are incomplete while your PC is organizing files in the background. Windows shows a notice with a link to check progress. You can dismiss the notice when you're done. There is also a status for files and folders so you can easily tell whether they're available online in the cloud or stored on your device. And then another new feature is regarding the lock screen with Microsoft saying that after rolling out new lock screen widgets to insiders in the EEA, it's now beginning to roll out more widget options on the lock screen as well as support for lock screen widget personalization, which was previously referred to as weather and more. The next new feature is regarding AR actions. And most of these, as mentioned, I have posted on previously. So Microsoft says you can use AR actions in File Explorer to edit images or summarize documents. You just right click on a file and select AR Actions. And there are two components to this new AR Actions. First of all, you've got image actions. So you'll be able to blur background with photos. You've got visual search with Bing, erase object and photos, remove background with paint. And then you've got AR Actions for Microsoft 365, which Microsoft says makes it easier to work with your documents. With the Summarize action in Copilot, you can quickly generate summaries of files stored in OneDrive and SharePoint. No need to open each one. Just take note that that requires a 365 subscription and a Copilot license. Just to mention the next new feature. And by the way, while we are talking about new features, there are 18 new features in this update, which is quite a lot of new features for Windows 11 24 H2. 
So the next new feature, when you're signed in with a work or school account using an Entra ID, File Explorer will display people actions in the activity column and the recommended section at the top of File Explorer Home. And here's one I posted on just a couple of days ago. The next new feature is part of Windows Hello. So as part of the enhanced passkey features released in September 2023, Microsoft says you'll now see a redesigned Windows Hello interface these modernized visual updates, Microsoft says, support fast, clear communication that appear across multiple authentication flows, including the Windows sign-in screen, passkey, recall the Microsoft Store, and so on. And there's a fix where Windows Hello may recognize your face on the logging screen. However, it would still fail and then prompt you to enter your PIN. That's been addressed. And Microsoft has improved fingerprint login after standby, saying it is now more robust. And then another new feature is new advanced settings. The redesigned advanced settings page is now found under settings system advanced and is an update of the four developers page and makes it easy to find key options. I have posted on this previously. So you've got things like enable long paths, virtual workspaces and so on. Then just to mention the next new feature. Windows activation and expiration prompts now match the Windows 11 design and appear as system notifications when action is required. And another new feature is when you go to your settings, privacy and security, when it does roll out to the stable, text and image generation, right here at the bottom. Microsoft says that you can go to this page to see which third-party apps have recently used generative AI models provided by Windows, and you can choose which apps are permitted to use them, with Microsoft saying, putting you in charge of your device's AI experience. And something else I've posted on previously, if we go to our settings home, there's going to be a new device card on the settings home page, which will show key specifications and usage details of your PC, and from the card, you can go directly to settings about for more detailed information about your PC. But just take note though, this card will show when you are signed in with your Microsoft account and is only available in the United States. And here's a new feature I posted on just a couple of days ago. I'm, I'm actually going to leave the video for this linked because, because it was quite in depth. But just a quick recap, I'm just going to mention this. There are more time and language and keyboard settings that are now being moved from control panel to the new modern settings. With Microsoft mentioning, you can now add additional clocks, change your time server and customize date and time formatting, including AM, PM symbols directly from settings. Another change is number and currency formats, Unicode UTF-8 support and options to copy language and region settings to other accounts are now under settings as well. And keyboard character repeat and cursor blink rate settings are now easier to find under settings accessibility. Check the video out for more info. It was quite in-depth. I'll leave it linked. And the next new feature is for Copilot Plus PCs, where the agent in settings, the AI agent in settings, which Microsoft says helps you quickly find and change settings, was initially available on Snapdragon-powered Copilot Plus PCs, but is now available and supports AMD and Intel powered Copilot Plus PCs. But just take note, Microsoft says this feature currently works only when your primary display language is set to English. And there is a fix rolling out that's addressing a crash, which is always important. So if we head into our settings account, sign in options, Microsoft says settings may crash if you attempt to add a security key on this page. So that's quite an important fix. And I'm just going to mention the next because I have posted on this previously. There's a new feature for Task Manager, which now uses standard metrics to show CPU workload consistently across all pages aligning with industry standards and third-party tools, according to Microsoft. And here's a new feature that's rolling out across the board in our next optional update, both for Windows 10 and Windows 11, where there is a new Windows backup for organizations, which Microsoft says is now generally available, with Microsoft saying you can use it for device transitions with enterprise-grade backup and restore, according to Microsoft. 
And then here's another one I've posted on previously. Video will also be linked. Starting in August this year, which we're currently in, Windows 11 version 24H2 will no longer include Windows PowerShell 2. So PowerShell 2 is being deprecated. Check the video out for more info. And there is an underlying issue that's been fixed, which could result in certain apps like Sticky Notes and Notepad crashing. And they also fixed Kerberos, where there may be an underlying crash in Kerberos when attempting to access a cloud file share. So another crash fix, that's important. And there's an improvement for login, where Microsoft says it's addressed some underlying cases which could lead to you seeing a blank white screen or a screen saying just a moment for a few minutes when logging into your PC. So that's important. Microsoft has also fixed an underlying issue that could result in certain apps, including Explorer.exe crashing. That's an important one because Explorer.exe is the shell of your computer. So that's your start menu, taskbar, file explorer, and so on. So that's important. And there's an audio improvement where Microsoft has addressed an underlying audio service hang, which could impact the ability to play audio in certain cases. So guys, those new features, as mentioned, there are 18 new features and those bug fixes I've mentioned and improvements are all rolling out gradually. Now, just to mention three fixes rolling out normally because I think they're important. There are a couple more and these will be rolled out at the get-go. The first is the update addresses an issue that prevented some system recovery features from working properly due to a temporary file sharing conflict. And there was an issue in the resilient file system, REFS, where using backup apps with large files could sometimes exhaust system memory. And the last one to mention, there is a performance fix, which is important. The update addresses an issue that slows application installation on ARM64 devices. Some installers might take longer to complete. So quite a lot going on in our next optional update for Windows 11 24H2, now in final preview, KB5064081, which will be rolling out, I would suggest, starting Tuesday the 26th of August. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.